CFS Warriors. It's Victoria coming to you from Mexico. I'm on the beach. I found the light so I can actually shoot this video. Uh, you can see the gorgeous ocean behind me. Sunset just happened. We've got that real pretty island in the background. And so basically, I want to talk to you tonight about patterns that might have contributed to the illness. You know, this has been kind of an important thing for me to look into because I was hit with the Epstein-Barr virus uh, about seven years ago, and that's what started me on this long journey back to health. And so what I discovered after I'd been ill, you know, on the recovery path about two and a half years ago through the Optimum Health Clinic, Alex Howard talks about how there are things that we were living in an unsustainable way before we got the illness. So that our bodies, it was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back when we actually, our bodies kicked in the CFS. And so, you know, the important reason to look at our patterns is so that we don't continue to repeat those. So that when we get well, we don't drive our bodies back into the ground again. And so, you know, the things that I've been looking at are the achiever pattern and the helper pattern, specifically for me. And, you know, I'm not sure, you know, there are a lot of patterns. You could say there's people pleasing patterns, can check out the Enneagram. I did another video on that and or just look into the Enneagram because it'll give you some information on different personality types. But as you look back on your life, it might be good to see like what was I doing before I got ill? And I know for me, I was in a really high stress situation. I put a lot of stress on myself and to, I was driving myself to be the very best. I was working really long hours uh, with homeschooling my kids. I'd stay up every night just in the books and my husband was always like, come on, you need to go to bed. No, I've got to, you know, make this perfect. So I guess that's another pattern, perfectionism. And that was driving me. And so I really had this foot in my back all the time. And, you know, even though I would go take a break and I would go race off to the masseuse and get a massage, you know, periodically, it was like I was, I was always racing. I remember going to go do my swim and my workout and I would go to the gym and I would just be racing through, checking my phone, you know, gotta go here, gotta go there. And it was just a really stressful way to live. And so I'm not saying that you're doing any of that, but I just wanna throw that out to you to consider as you look back at like pre-illness, if there were any patterns that you can address. Because you know CFS kind of stops us dead in our tracks. So it's a good time to, to take a look at those things. And you know, I've come to value, I always valued stillness. I was always kind of a, a real reflective person even before CFS. But this has caused me to really reflect on my behaviors and realize how they weren't serving me. So it, it's worth looking at because if I want to come out of this illness, which I'm, I'm doing and I do want to come out of, I want to change those patterns so that when I'm on the other side of it, I don't drive myself in the ground like I used to. Or I don't, you know, I, I talked about this in another video, but merge with everyone and give away my energy all the time rather than maintaining my energy in my core here. So anyway, those are just some thoughts on patterns that might contribute to the illness. I hope that's something for you to think about and see if it might help you on your path to recovery. And take care, warriors, and remember, life's not over, it's starting again.